Hello everyone. So today we're going to look at a nice problem from functions. This question was asked in ITJ in 1999. So let's start. So in this question, f of x is given as mod of p of x minus q plus r mod of x. Here p, q, r are some positive real numbers as it is given. Now the question is find the relationship between p, q, r, this positive constants, if f of x is going to attain its minimum value at a single point. So let's start. Now our function f of x is equal to modulus of p of x plus r modulus of x. Here p, q, r are some positive real numbers. Now our objective of the question is to find the value of p, q, r such that f of x is going to attain its minimum value at a single point. Now here if you focus f of x is consist of two modulus function that is mod of p of x minus q and modulus of r. So first we need to define the function after that we can check f of x is taking a minimum value at a single point or not. So to define mod mod of x or any mod of general any function it's changing its nature when this inside argument is zero now let's calculate the value of x when this inside argument is zero that is x is equal to q by p similarly this modulus of x is changing its behavior around zero so i can say at x is equal to zero it's changing its behavior now i'll plot this point x is equal to zero and x is equal to q by p on the number line so x is equal to 0 is somewhere here and x is equal to q by p. See here q is a positive number. Similarly p is also a positive number. So q by p is also a positive number. So q by p is located somewhere here. Now I can see I have divided the number line into three parts. This is the first part, this is the second part and this is the third part. So I'll be defining the function into all the three parts to so check the nature of the function in these three parts. So let's start with the first part where x is greater than q by p. So the case one is where x is greater than or equal to q by p. In this case, as you can see, the first modulus is positive and similarly, the second modulus is also positive. So I can write clearly, I can write f of x as here is p of x minus q plus r into x. Now, as you can see, this is a straight line and I want to define, determine the nature of the f of x here. So I'll differentiate on both sides with respect to x. So f dash of x will be equal to p plus r and the differentiation of q is zero. So I can see here P is positive, R is positive, it is greater than zero. That means it is an increasing function in this domain X is greater than equal to Q by P. Now let's talk about the case two, where X is in between zero to Q by P. So I'll take X zero to Q by P. And as you can see in the first case, I've taken Q by P included. So I'll not include Q by P here. Now the, our function F of X, as you can see in this range, when x is from 0 to q by p, the first modulus will be negative. So I'll apply a negative and I'll get this as q minus px. Now the second modulus, as you can see, it is a positive here. So plus rx. Now to define the nature of this, it is increasing or decreasing. Clearly it's a straight line. To define the nature, it is increasing or decreasing. I'll take the derivative on both sides with respect to x. So differentiation will be equal to r minus p. Now case two is over and here I have sub cases here. As you can see f dash of x is equal to r minus p and I don't know the relationship between r and p. So to determine whether it's increasing or decreasing I need the values of r and p. So let's talk about these values. As you can see first first condition is in the case two first condition is if r is greater than p then that means r minus p will be positive. If r minus p is positive then that means I can say it is an increasing function in this range. So f dash x will be greater than zero in this range. Now second, r if r is equal to p in this case, if r is equal to p here, then I can see that f dash of x will be equal to zero and our function will be a constant function because the derivative, derivative will be equal to zero. Now in the third case where p is greater than r. Now as you can see, if p is greater than r, then r minus p, our f dash fx will be equal to r minus p and r minus p is less than zero. That means it is a decreasing function. So this is the case two. Now I'll be calculating for case three in the next page. Now in the previous slide, we have determined the nature of the function in case one, where x was greater than or equal to q by p. The function was increasing function and it was a straight line. As you can see, f dash of x was p plus r and it is positive. Now in the case two, when x belongs to zero to q by p, in this range, we got the function increasing, constant and decreasing for some values of R and P depending on the cases we have discussed. Now let's discuss the case three. 
So case three is when x belongs to minus infinity to zero and zero is open here because I have taken close here. Now f of x I can write this as both of the modulus will be negative at the same time. So I'll apply negative outside and I'll get this as q minus p of x minus times of r of x. Now to determine the nature of the function increasing or decreasing, I'll take the derivative on both sides and I'll get this as minus of p and minus of r. As you can see, p is a positive, r is a positive real number. So minus p minus r is also less than zero. And I can say here in the third case, it is a decreasing function. Now I'll discuss the whole three cases graphically and I'll show you the relationship between pqr for which f of x is going to attain a minimum value at one point. Now previously we have defined the nature of the function f of x in all the three cases. As you can see in case one and case two, there's no ambiguity. The function is either increasing or decreasing. In case one, as you can see, the function is always increasing. In case three, as you can see, the function is always decreasing. But in case two, we'll be having three subparts, whether it is increasing or constant or decreasing depending on the value of r and p. Now our objective is to calculate the relationship between pqr so that the function is going to attain its minimum value on a single point. So I'll draw all the three cases here, as you can see. Using graphical approach, I'm going to determine the relationship between pqr so that f of x is going to attain its minimum value on a single point. So I'm going to draw all the three graphs here. First, I'll be mark the points where it is changing its behavior. As you can see at zero, it is changing its behavior and at q by p. So first I'm going to draw the first graph. So in case three, it is, let's move from minus infinity to zero. So in case three, I can see the function is always decreasing. So let's say it is decreasing function up to zero. Up to zero, it is decreasing. Now we'll move towards case two where x is from zero to q by p. Now we'll be considering first case here in the first graph when r is greater than p. When r is greater than p, it is increasing. So up to zero, it is decreasing. And from this point, it is increasing as you can see here. So it increases like this up to q by p. Now here, the value of the derivative is slope is equal to, as you can see, r minus p. Now after q, after x passes through q by p, as you can see, we'll enter into the first case where x is greater than q by p. And here the derivative is p plus r. As you can see, r minus p is less than p plus r. So in, in this case, it is increasing, but as you can see, it is increasing with a different rate. Here f dash of x will be equal to p plus r, as you can see for the first case. So this is our graph. Now in this graph, if you visualize one thing here is, we are getting a minimum value at a single point. As you can see at x is equal to zero, we are getting a minimum value. So our first case is accepted. That means r is greater than p is accepted. Now we'll move towards the second case where r is equal to p. So now let's draw for the graph for minus infinity to zero. Minus infinity to zero, it is always decreasing. I'll draw again. So it is similar to which I've drawn on the graph one. Now from one, sorry, from zero, as, I, as you can see, we'll be entering in the direction of q by p into the next interval that is case two. Now in case two, this time we'll consider r is equal to p. Now, as you can see, it is a constant function. So it will not increase or decrease here. As you can see, it is a constant function till q by p. Now, as x is greater than q by p, we'll enter into the third region that is case one. In case one, it is increasing. So from this point on out, it increases with the rate f dash will be equal to p plus r. Now, as you can see, it is not function is not taking attaining its maximum or minimum value at a single point. As you can see, it is a constant from zero to q by p. So this case is rejected because f of x is not attaining its minimum value on a single point. Now let's talk about the case three where r is less than p. So from minus infinity to zero, again, the same case, it is decreasing. Now, as soon as x is greater than zero, let's mark q by p here will be entering in the region of zero to q by p in zero to q by p will be considering this this part where r is less than p that means decreasing so from this point onwards it will decrease and decrease up to this point up to q by p now here the rate from which it is decreasing is minus p minus r and here the rate from which it is decreasing is r minus p so r minus p is little greater than minus p minus r as you can see their rate from which these two are decreasing is different different. So I've drawn something like this. Now from this point onwards, Q by P, as I move towards infinity, as you can see, we'll move towards the case one and case one, it is increasing where the rate of change of F 
is p plus r that means the derivative is p plus r so increasing so here f dash is p plus r now if you observe one more thing f of x is going to attain its minimum value on a single point that is q by p so this case is also accepted because it is attaining its minimum value at this point q by p now we'll move towards the final answer that is graph 1 was accepted where r was greater than p and graph 3 was accepted where r is less than p as you can see in both the cases f of x is going to attain its minimum value on a single point now first case was r was greater than p and this was accepted so this is our one of the solution now third case was accepted because again f of x is going to attain a minimum value at a single point so r less than p so this is our solution if i club these two so our final answer is where r is not equal to p f of x is going to attain its minimum value on a single point so our final answer is r is not equal to p and that is the relationship between p and q and r so this will be our final answer and that will be all